Hi guys, Artic here. So for this video, I'll be teaching you guys how to counter Iki. So I know most of you guys that already encountered Iki, you are have, um, having a bad time to actually find counter even though you know that is uh, his biggest weakness is AOE damage. So this video here have been provided by um, YMR, Dozy Bay, and Acne. So three of them, um, they, they submitted some uh, video showcase to let me share to you guys about what kind of Esper or what kind of team comp is able to counter them. So if you want to skip to a specific team comp to watch it, you can use the timeline I provided below. If you don't want and if you want to listen through the whole thing, the whole showcase and what kind of Esper is able to counter, feel free to enjoy the whole thing, alright? So I'll slowly explain their team idea, why is this Esper, why is this team comp, how how can he counter Iki, then um, then uh, you guys can listen for it. If you still have any question, feel free to comment down and then I will try to uh, solve your question. Alright, so let's take a look at the first one. Okay, so the first showcase here will be Yamato Team Fighting Enemy Team. So this um, showcase is provided by YMA. I don't know how to pronounce his name, but I'll just say YMA or why is it called Yim? <laughs> okay, sorry. So uh, so he provided this showcase. So he's using this team, and you can see this team doesn't have any shimmer. Okay, then I'll later I'll post his equipment and his resonance for you. But keep note, this team resonance is not high at all. Like um the, um you function here is like R two above then Jin Xiu here is R two above babies here is R zero, um his Suji I think is if not mistaken is R one or R two somewhere there but his Yamato is R six but maybe you are so surprised that finally Yamato have his own showcase right so the main reason for Yamato is able to counter Iki's team and this Iki's team is a speed team which is Tolan Anna plus Jin Xiu maybe team so it's a mixture between speed and the tank like if you watch my previous video the one that i introduced how should you um make a good team for your iki so um, your minimal requirement is kind of like the r2 jin Chu plus maybe so he this guy here optic lead is playing speed plus this team but how should you actually counter iki so iki's biggest weakness is aoe damage and you see yamato here yamato s3 here provides him attack up and defend up buff right so it's basically buffing himself but the main important is here the s2 here is an aoe damage that is able to actually one shot iki and then you have a chance to uh, apply buff blocker so this buff blocker will actually change your whole combat um, because the moment jinchu get buff blocker and jinchu won't be able to get the buff from mavis because babies can get the intimidate buff by providing crit rate up to Jin Chiu. But if Jin Chiu got buff blocker on him, then Mavis will not able to provide crit rate up to Jin Chiu. Then Mavis will not able to get intimidate buff. Without intimidate buff, um, without intimidate buff, Mavis will not be that tanky, and Mavis can be actually killed by the Aspers here. Okay, so the main important here uh, for Yamato is AoE damage and also the buff blocker. Then why should I say R6? Because R6 to get a bonus turn after S3 to S2. So he, this showcase here is fully auto. You don't have to manual by yourself. So you're gonna need, uh, the, the AI will always cast S3 first and then because you're R6, you instantly go to R2, uh, S2. So if you're not R6, maybe you are not able to fully auto this team. Maybe you have to manual yourself by casting S2 by yourself. And then without the attack up buff and defend up buff, not sure are you able to actually one shot Iki. But let's see the showcase now. Okay, so here, let me lower down a bit. So en enemies Yamato try, uh, sorry, yeah, enemies Tolan tried to ban Feng Shun, but he failed. But then let's see how how is the combat. So Feng Shun did the AOE damage. You can see Feng Shun did AOE damage, it blends a defend down here and then Yamato is almost gonna die already because Yamato is just being a glass cannon okay then actually Yamato sorry Iki, I keep saying Yamato Iki is gonna die already because he's a glass cannon and then um, Yamato here actually doesn't need the S3 buff if you already build him with crit rate because you already get the attack up buff all those stuff right but yeah so let's take a look here so now Anna is just uh, doing his her counter attack stuff Okay, then Suja is just gonna randomly damage because it's got ton. Then 
Yamato buff himself with attack up and defend up. The most important is defend up because he's a defender. And then he's gonna cast S2. Okay, the buff wear off. Then he cast S2. You can see the S2 damage is dealing very high. And then um, three of them died. Which is Jin Chiu, Iki, and Tolet. So three of them died. And the part is here. You see, buff blocker. So now Jin Chiu have the buff blocker here, and enemy Mavis will um, take her turn soon. Okay, so now you're just applying all those buff stuff. Okay, damage again. Okay, now enemy Mavis took her turn already. She have a uh, crit rate up buff from a passive, and then she is not able to apply the crit rate up buff to Jin Chiu, even though she applied Holiday Rest or all those griefless things, but Golden Realm buff doesn't count as a buff. So with that said, with Jin Chiu is not able to get the buff, and then uh, you can see Mavis here is not able to get the Intimidate. She only get the Punish Evil because she land debuff on the enemy, but she's not able to get Intimidate. So without Intimidate, she actually is able to die very easily. So you can see uh, later okay now now cause um the asper's ai are built to actually focus maybe more so without maybe it's intimidate she's gonna die very easily because she's not tanky at all okay maybe is left like a bit hp left and anna is still just doing her counter attack okay because our team here also have maybes so she will protect um them so they go into Grave Flurse, which is fine. And they can't kill our Mavis because the Mavis here have the Intimidate buff from Jin Chiu. Okay, then Feng Shun clear Mavis, then technically um, it's already a win. Because Anna here have not, able, not enough damage to actually kill Mavis. And then three of them are in Grave Flurse state, which means after two turns, they'll kill themselves by, uh, after the effect wore off. See? And I can't, can't break through Mavis um, shield because of the intimidate buff. The only way they can actually win is from Iki's S1, but Iki no longer have the ambitious mood, so it's just ab about the time method. Okay, now they now Mavis revived the whole team, and then they are kind of doomed now. Okay, so Suje failed to dispel, which is fine. Also, we still have Yamato here. It's almost going to kill Anna just now because Yamato is also a multi-hitter. Okay, then let me fast forward a bit. Technically, you are repeating the whole thing, and then maybe we'll revive them later. Okay, so now um, Suje killed Anna because Suje is also, also a multi hitter. Okay, then, then you just slowly take your time, and then you'll kill Iki. Something like this. Right, so this first showcase here is about uh, Yamato being the counter of Iki's team. Which is very surprising because I did not expect Yamato to have his own um, showcase now. Alright, so let's take a look at the next one. Okay, so the next showcase here, which is also very surprisingly, we actually using Yalina in the PvP content. So this um, showcase here is also provided by YMR and then um, fighting another player. Keep note, all these showcase here, they are all high-end PvP, so their equipment, everything is very top. It's not like you copy paste a team, you're gonna work because you still have to tune your team, you have to build the team in the good way. So this time, it's also uh, very impressive because you're not uh, using any Shimmer Legend, fighting Anna plus R6 Lian plus Iki and then Jin Chiu, Mavis Com. And this Mavis is on AG set, so Mavis instantly get the intimidate buff at the start. So enemy team is a very strong team, especially there's um, R6 Lian here, we have, they have Iki and also Anna. But, she um he actually using Yalina to counter. First thing Yalina is able to provide buff blocker, and then Yalina have the provide to damage taken, crit rate reduce, and also randomly dispel one buff, which is very useful. And especially enemy is a R6 Lian. If you watch my previous video about Yalina countering R6 uh countering Lian, because Lian is able to keep on provide healing, and the more you heal, the more promise breakers that you're gonna get. So your damage taken is gonna increase, and then she's gonna keep on pursuiting with her s3 damage so this is a very impressive thing and then there's a combo be between um tricky yalina and yamato again yamato can pro um 
you can replace with other AoE damage dealer, but Yamato have a more consistent um, buff blocker uh, compared to y uh, Yalina because Yalina buff blocker is single target. So you need to apply the buff blocker on Jinchu, but Yamato is AoE damage and then uh, have higher chance to apply buff blocker. So it, that's just the difference, but let's take a look at the showcase here. Okay, so first thing, um, Tricky dispel everything here. Tricky uh, mix stun and then apply like uh, a lot of mystery up, debuff stuff, and then you can see Anna here is stacking up the Promise Breaker. So let's take a look. Yeah, uh, so Anna here have three stack already, and then Anna counter attack again because there's two healing procs, and then it's five stack already. So it's stacking up very fast, and then if you the moment Anna stack to seven stack, then Yalina will be able to keep on pursuing with her AOE damage S3. So the S3 here is AOE damage, and then AOE damage is the weakness of Iggy. So let's take a look. Yeah, so now ya Yamato is going to buff up, deal damage, and then applies buff blocker. So buff blocker here, buff blocker there. And then with the buff blocker, Anna will not able to apply the S3 as well. And then you can see Anna have already 10 stack of the Promise Breaker. And then Yalina pursued with her S3. It's an AoE damage, and then you can see Iki instantly die. Even though this is a R6 Lian team, and I already mentioned in my previous video, R6 Lian is one of the best team to actually protect Iki. But even though, even that said, Iki still died. That's how big the weakness is of Iki. Iki is very strong when you're able to protect him, but uh, we always find ways to actually counter Iki, and then you can see Iki died already. And then Anna counter again, and then let's see. So, uh. Tricky also um, pro the Gambit passive on Iki because Iki is 4 stack. Okay, AoE damage again. And then because Anna, um, Anna took a turn and then he, she's 10 stack above, so Yalina triggered another S3 AoE damage, attacking everyone. So it's, they're slowly dying by Yalina's bleed, Yalina's AoE damage, and then also uh, the Promise Breaker. So Anna here is actually helping Yalina to. Um, boost up the promise stack, uh, promise breaker stack faster. You see, keep on catch casting S3 damage. Okay, then now the problem is, uh, the intimidate buff is still on Mavis. So the moment Mavis um, take her turn later, Mavis will not able to put trade rate up on Jinchu. So Jinchu will not share intimidate buff to Mavis. So Mavis will not have intimidate uh, protection. Okay, now four of them died. And then you can see um, they are still trying to kill Mavis, which can't because there's an intimidate buff. Okay, now Mavis took her turn. She cannot apply crit rate up on Jinchu because Jinchu is on um, Promise Breaker. Ah, uh, sorry, Jinchu is on Buff Blocker. So uh, Mavis no longer have intimidate buff protection. And then now you can damage Mavis easily. And then later, the moment Mavis die is your victory time because your Mavis is still alive. And keep note, this team is still fully auto, it's not manual at all. So there's actually a lot of counter for different team comp, different Asper. So there's no Asper that is one-sided to one um, one side only. It's like, Iki is very strong, right? We all agree that Iki is broken, but the moment you know how his kit work, how the team work, you can actually find your own counter to fight them. So that's the good thing about this line. Like that, I know that there's like Anna is being very strong, very, very broken. But if you know Anna's weakness, which is multi hit, you can counter Anna easily. Then Iki is being very strong, but the weakness is AoE, and you can counter very easily by knowing that AoE damage. So you look for Asper that can deal AoE damage, and then what is the weakness for Jinchu and Mavis? Jinchu and Mavis' biggest weakness is buff blocker. Because the moment you buff block, you are not able to get shield, you are not able to get intimidate buff. So um, so you look for buff blocker as well, such as Yamato, such as Galina, such as Gaius, Raven, all those stuff that can apply buff blocker consistent, consistently, then you're able to win. And you can see this team is not being Shimmer, and enemy team have been uh, two um, Shimmer as well, with a R6 Lian. So it is very strong that you can see that this player is even knockout out 41, rank 41. So it's very important to actually know what is the enemy team build, what you, can you do to actually counter them. So this is the fun part of this slide if you actually know how to build your team. Alright, so let's take a look at the next one. 
Okay, so the next one to showcase here will be Archibald. So you can see here is um, basically the same team I showcased uh, the first one, which is the Yamato team, but the replacement for Yamato is Archibald this time. So Archibald, there's a very strong combo with Mavis. So Archibald here, when you have Mavis in your team, he doesn't need any crit rate at all. So let me show you, where is it? Here. If Mavis is an ally, Archibald crit rate plus 100% and his APO plus 30% upon landing a critical hit. Triggers once per turn and then, which means your Archibald doesn't need to build him with crit rate, you can just build him like full, full out DPS as mo most importantly, this is a AoE damage, it is a very high damage because you can just build him pure DPS and then you don't have to build crit rate which is very easy to build. And then you have to you also can inflict one swing debuff which only force them to cast s1 and then deal true damage to everyone uh, at, as well then another thing cause why yamato is so good is because of the buff blocker but if you look at archibald here archibald s2 have also buff blocker so three hit aoe damage and then every hit if you max up is a 50 percent chance so every hit have a 50 percent chance of inflicting buff blocker so this buff blocker is going to counter um, Mavis, Jinchu um, team very efficiently as well. So let's take a look. <coughs> so same thing, his um, function is built very fast, so you can push very fast. And then AoE damage, you can AoE damage here. Uh, Iki is already half HP. And then Mavis apply the Holiday Rest buff for Archibald, so Archibald is able to cast S3 later. That is high damage. Okay, AoE damage again. Cost here AoE damage, AoE damage, and then Jinchu, another AoE damage, Iki already died. Okay, then left um, three of them, which is Anna, Feng Shun, and Mavis. Then, let's take a look at Archibald. Then Archibald here is going to cast S3. Bam, bam, bam. 100k damage, and then this 100k damage is not including the damage to Jinchu and Iki yet. And this damage here already killed Mavis. <laughs> we haven't even looked at the part of the buff blocker, but if you can't one shot them with your S3, you can still apply the buff blocker with your S2 later, then maybe we will not get the intimidate buff. So it's the same thing, just that this showcase here, he managed to kill um, the Mavis faster. So now left Anna here, and no worries because you still have Feng Shun in your team. And Feng Shun is able to, um, it's also a Anna counter, right? Because it's a multi hit, and then it's, th it's just a time matter now because three of them will die after their Griefless end. And then the last one will be Anna, but Anna won't be able to kill uh, Mavis unless his Anna is very very um, pain to actually go through the Intimidate shield or else Anna would not be able to kill Mavis. Then this team basically you're just gonna keep on rotating until Anna died. So let me slightly fast forward, you can see two of them died already then, okay Anna damage you look at Mavis, Anna damage can um, hit through Mavis um, Intimidate shield from um, Jin shield right. So, then later on, Iki um, died from the sleep no more, and then with the in total in uh, invincibility, but uh, Archibald here have dispelled. So Archibald managed to dispel the intimidate, uh, sorry, uh, dispel the invincibility buff from Iki, so Iki no longer have invincibility buff, and then deal a lot of multi-heat damage to Anna, then Anna revive, it attack again, but it's fine because we still have function here to slowly fold up the damage. Okay, so Iki died and then left Anna with two seed and then now you just need to slowly kill Anna. And Anna uh, not able to kill Mavis, so basically your team win. The S1 and then um, function follow up. Okay, so this is um, another showcase about um, Archibald. So Archibald is the replacement of Yamato. Alright, so let's take a look at the next one. Okay, so this one here is from Acne. So Acne, um, Acne's team is um, Tolan, and then you can see other than Tolan, there's no longer any um, other Shimmer Esper. So this is a very impressive team. Acne is the PVE god, and then P he is playing PVP content with PVE mode. So you can see there's Embla here, Yushu here, Function here, and Dm here. This is basically. Um, basically, um, Flasato Fantasy team, right? If you can see most of the Flasato Fantasy team is here. If you change Tolan out to put Haley, maybe that that is a pure Flasato Fantasy team already. So, what is uh, Tolan can actually also counter um, Iki's team um, by manually. Auto, you can't do that because auto, you cannot control who to 
zero hour out time zero out uh, with the s3 of tolan but if you are manual you can actually just s3 instantly on mavis so mavis will no longer uh, in the battle for two round zero hour out so now all of them will not have mavis passive so without mavis pa passive Iki will just die instantly because because Iki is a glass cannon without without the mavis protection and then this team here will don't have like lian don't have like ollie or sally to uh, actually provide more damage reduction or, or protection to Iki because that's only and this team here is only relying on mavis um Grifler. so the moment mavis get zero hour out then then Iki is just just a, a free food and then this team here uh you can actually build other team as well like aoe damage you can like put raven you can just clear them gaius or just clear them it's it's fine but so this team here is he's playing pvp with pve unit so he damaged um embla so embla is stacking up the seed and then the moment the seed explode you can see the damage is going to be firework boom fireworks <laughs> fire <laughs> i look at the damage here it's just crazy like four of them just instantly died and then because it because the moment and blasted proc is like proc um damage each other and then anna died as well then it left left mavis by by herself then you just clear mavis easily right so this is a very interesting as well he did he didn't record on audio mode or else it would be even funnier so the main thing you had you need to have tolan for this team so you need tolan to ban uh mavis out or if you don't have to learn if you can build your Li out fast enough to actually lock out mavis you can also do this team as well so you can uh like just buff up um raven uh sorry no raven embla and then you just prod the seed and then everything just explode it's just like firework okay so um let's take a look at the next showcase Okay, so the next showcase here will be Diesel Base, um, Diesel Bay um, team fighting Iki team. So enemy Iki team here have Arna, have Anna, have Cecilia, have Iki itself, and Chiang Chuli. So basically, there's four Shima on the enemy side, and then um, on his side, there's Xuan Pin and Raven and Chiang Chuli. So it's like three Shima fighting four Shima. But the main thing is about Chiang Chuli and Raven here. So if we take a look at um, Chiang Chuli. So Jiang Chuli in demon mode. Okay, so first thing he have a very strong AoE damage. So this AoE damage can actually kill Iki easily. And the main thing is his um demon mode. So if he go into demon mode, he can randomly jump on one unit, right? Because it's a random um choice. It's not uh where is it? Where's the demon mode? Here, dispel all buff on one ran random enemy every turn. And then you deal damage so this random enemy can also hit Iki on stealth mode so the stealth mode can only prevent counter attack and also pursuit attack although single target damage but aoe damage and the random splash damage from the demon mode is pure rng so you can actually jump on Iki even though it is on uh invincibility something like this or maybe you can jump on maybe uh, Jin Jiang Chuli is also a very good counter to uh, the Jin Chiu Mavis team because Mavis have the shield but you can just dispel it, you ignore it and then you deal true damage as well. Then Raven here is an AoE damage dealer. So technically he is playing a cleave team without a speed team because uh, Iki is not suitable in a speed team, right? So his team will always be slow. But because he his team is slow, you don't have to build your team with speed. You, you just need someone that is even faster. It's an AP pusher that is even faster than the Iki's team. So Raven here have a very strong AoE damage that can dispel all buff as well. And then you can follow up with a damage with Pursuit Attack. And keep note, this Raven here is only R0, it's not even R2. So um, you also can deal extra damage, AoE damage. You can also inflict Seal as well. And this S1 here can also buff Steel. So let's take a look. So he does Clara to AP push the team first. And then um, Champion to buff up his team. Okay, then... And I just counter attack right, but it's fine. Then Raven follow up with S2, and you can see the S2 damage already clear almost all of the enemy Esper. And Iki died already. Okay. Then um enemy left like a few HP. Chang Juli uh, went into demon mode, but the team is covered with uh, immunity because of Clara. Okay, then the rest here, maybe deal AoE damage again, apply um holiday rest, then Chang Juli follow up clear all, all the Esper here, Cecilia revive, and then it revive 
uh, Iki as well. But the revive here, Iki will not have the ambitious moon because Iki is no uh, Iki haven't get sleep no more, so he cannot he cannot have his own protection. And then the moment he die or revive, there's no longer ambitious moon unless he clear he cast S three. So now his team is totally nothing. And then Changchuli went into demon mode. Demon uh, the enemies Changchuli jump on champion, but which is fine because you have a Mavis here. And then Raven follow up with S3, clear everyone, and left um, Anna herself. But you just need to take your time. You just slowly kill because uh, you have AoE damage, which is uh, sorry, not AoE, multi hit damage from Raven. So you just need to take your time to clear and uh, kill Anna. Okay, so so Anna is just doing her stuff, and then Raven follow up with a passive. Then so if we slowly uh, keep up a bit, then it, in the end Anna will die. Okay, so this is Jiang Julie's team. This is basically the cliff team to kill Iki. So this one doesn't have a uh, Mavis and Jinchu, right? So let's take a look at the next one. Okay, so this one here is also from Diesel Bay. He provided it's basically the same team I showcased the previous one, but this time enemy is not a Cecilia team. This time is the Mavis plus R6 Lian team, and then there's a Anna, Raven, and Iki. Alright, so this is also a very annoying team, but let's see how he cliff it. So he used Clara to AP boost the team, put immunity, and then Champagne gonna buff up the team. And then Jiang Chiu, um, let's see. Okay, then Raven follow up with the S2 passive. He just instantly clear two of them, which is um, Raven and Iki instantly die. And you can see the R6 Lian here left like a little bit of HP. It almost died already. Okay, then Jiang, uh, wait, where is it? Jiang Chuli follow up with S3 damage, AoE, it instantly kill uh, Mavis. But because Mavis cannot be revived, so it cannot proc Lian um, Bubble to revive um, Mavis. So now three of them is actually on Graveless mode, and then it just it's just a matter of time. And then the last problem here will be um, Anna. So if I slowly fast forward, you can see they are slowly dying. They're slowly dying, dying. And as long as your Mavis don't die, you are still um, fine. Okay, then full Raven um, passive follow up again. And then Raven um, S1 on um, Anna again. Then Raven S1 again. Then they all die because they are Griefless and first. Because um, they went into Griefless first, they die. They treat um their Mavis die first, so they trigger the Grievelessness, and then your ma your Mavis here is haven't triggered the grave Grievelessness, so you actually have an advantage of the turn. So in the end, he win by um, and everyone's Grievelessness wear off. Right, so that's uh that's all for the video here for my explanation show. Right, so that's actually a lot of way to counter. Um, Iki's tank team, like if Iki pair with Jinchu Mavis, you just need buff blocker, you need AoE damage, and then if you if enemy is paired with a speed team Iki, you just need to um like do someone like Donner to just bong them, and if enemy is just a pure, uh, if enemy is a Mavis Jinchu team, you can also um use Tolan or Li Ao to actually outspeed them, and then straight away bite uh, Mavis. Just ban Mavis out of the battle and then you clear Iki instantly because Iki is very glass cannon. Anyone with an AoE damage can probably kill him in one shot. So this is how you're gonna counter Iki. So Iki is very very strong. I have to admit, Iki is very strong only when you are able to provide him a very good protection. So if you can't provide him a good protection, he's even easier to he is easy to kill as easy as a rare esper. Or maybe some rare esper have even a better survivability than Iki. So it really, in the end of the day, it really depends on what kind of team you build to fight different kind of team. Iki can counter Anna, Anna can counter JJ, JJ can counter Iki. Yeah, so they, they have their own um, element chart within their own um, Shima Esper. So I hope this video can actually enlighten you guys or help you guys in your team building to actually counter Iki. There's a lot of way to actually kill him, just that you have to know how to build your own team or what kind of counter is the counter for Iki. Right, so I hope you guys actually um, get something else, some, learn something from this video. Like this is the top players sharing their team actually fighting Iki without using Iki. Right, so hope you guys enjoy the video. 
Special thanks for all the direct support on the YouTube membership. So for the benefactor of Artia, which is Gen MP, thanks for the support. And for the supporter or patron of Artia, which is Louis Sinader, Acne, Gemmai, Code Wilderness, Morkult Mor Regulant, Ziggy, Wang Tamer, Karma Rookie, and Sun Waltz. Thank you so much for the support. And special thanks to Louis Sinader and Acne for the two month track of the support. So hope you guys enjoy the video and see you guys in the next video. Bye bye.